Of all the skills that you'll develop in your oculoplastic career, suturing is critical. The key thing about suturing is that you can practice and you can practice as often as you like away from the patient. And the nice thing with oculoplastic suturing is you can practice without an operating microscope. So there really is no excuse for not being fluid when you're placing your first sutures with the patient. Here I'm using some uh, toy foam or modeling foam as my material. And I've picked up a stray 50 silk and I'm demonstrating an interrupted suture. The interrupted suture needs to be a reef knot that is then locked with a third knot but a surgeon's knot of two throws with one throw followed by another one throw is also acceptable. The sutures and suturing techniques really need to be fully understood before you come to a patient. The aim is to hold the suture at the two-thirds, one-third point where you have the most control as you're on the flat. Hold one skin edge, angle the suture and pass it through the skin. Push it through, pick it up again on the other side with a couple of little shuffles and you're ready to reuse it without having to recite it. Pick up the opposite skin edge with the roll of your hand, pass the needle through the skin edge, another little push, and then pull it through again with a little shuffle out on the other side, having rolled your knuckle in a clockwise fashion such that the needle holder can pull the suture back out. Throw one throw or two throws over and pull towards you to close the edge, and then do an anti-clockwise throw and pull away from you to place a reef knot. A third clockwise throw pulling towards you and your knot is locked. Interrupted sutures have the advantage of each holding individually, so if one lets go of the others around it are holding, but a running suture is a very fast way of holding together naturally opposed skin edges where there's no tension. So if you already had a set of deep sutures in place and you just wanted to ensure a good scar by bringing the skin edges together, then a running stitch is ideal. The essential idea is that you can place it in one pass if you can pick up both edges or two passes but what you want to achieve is that as you pull the needle back through, it's ready to go in again. And I demonstrate it here. This is deliberately zoomed out so you can see the angle of my fingers. So you've made your first pass, and now you look how your thumb knuckle on the needle holder rolls upwards, rolling the needle holder tip over. So you can pick the needle up, ready to go. Hold the skin edge, so it's a push, a push, a pull, and a pull, and then you're absolutely ready to do a little push, and a push, and a pull, and a pull. This saves you the time of reciting the needle back in the tip of the needle holder. So push, push, and a pull, pull, and you've made your stitch. Another push, push, and a pull and you're ready to go. This really is worth practicing away from the patient. The mattress stitch is a nice technique for bringing together both deep tissues and the skin. So with one stitch you can achieve a deep closure as well as skin apposition. Imagine that the pink foam is the deep layer and the white foam is the skin. So you pass through both layers on each side, taking a large bite, and then you backhand the needle, and on your way back, just pick up the skin. And this way you get deep closure and nice skin apposition to guarantee a good scar. 
one more two throws and another throw anti-clockwise so a reef knot to lock another good technique is the a deep buried knot this is bringing the deep edges together and to do this you lift up first the skin towards you and pick up the deep tissue and then, and this is quite cr critical, you pick up the deep tissue away from you. Okay, so it's skin towards you, deep tissue away from you, and this enables you to close. Again, a different set, so the deep tissue here is quite clearly the blue. Pick up the skin towards you, and then you're able to pass the needle through the deep tissue, and then pick up the deep tissue, not the skin, away from you and you can pass the suture again through the deep tissue and the knot is then buried uh, deep to the deep tissue so one clockwise throw and one anti-clockwise throw and this suture is looking a little loose actually but it still demonstrates nicely the principle and uh, another technique that again is worth practicing away from the patient the locked suture so you are closing perhaps skin in front of the ear uh, having borrowed some donor skin and now you want each suture, you, want to, you essentially want to place a running stitch but you want each suture to lock so you pass the needle through both sides of the skin pass the loop over the needle and pull the needle back through so it's immediately locked so again you go through one side through the other side and once the needle's through pass the, pass the loop over the tip of the needle pick up the needle and it's immediately locked <laughs>